Welcome to Nature Outside My Window, Birds of New England. Getting to know some common birds. One of the best things about birds is that they're everywhere. And even though many people don't realize it, they see and hear a wide variety of birds every day while going about their daily lives. Despite birds being all over the place, many people's ability to identify them begins with the American Robin and ends with the rock pigeon. Bird watching. Bird watching or birding is a form of wildlife observation in which the observation of birds is a recreational activity or a citizen science. It can be done with the naked eye through visual enhancement devices like binoculars and telescopes, by listening for bird sounds, or by watching public webcams. New England is home to many types of beautiful birds. Think about some of the birds that you have seen in your yard or in your town. Over 400 species of birds either breed, are residents of, migrate through, or winter in New England. This includes both land birds and seabirds. Crows and Jays of New England. Intelligent, wary, and virtually omnivorous, meaning they eat both plants and animals, the American crow is undoubtedly much more numerous than it was before the arrival of settlers. An opportunist in its feeding, the American crow consumes a great variety of plant and animal food, seeds, garbage, insects, mice. Its nest plundering is decried, but in orchards and fields, it destroys many injurious insects, such as grasshoppers and cutworms. However, the labeling of birds as either harmful or useful is misleading and antiquated, so it's something people don't really do anymore. Crows do destroy many eggs and nestlings of woodland and meadow birds, but they also weed out the weak and feeble, and they alert the animals in a neighborhood when danger approaches. Blue Jay, one of the loudest and most colorful birds of eastern backyards and woodlots, the Blue Jay is unmistakable. Intelligent and adaptable, it may feed on almost anything and it's quick to take advantage of bird feeders. Besides their raucous JJ calls, Blue Jays make a variety of musical sounds and they can do a remarkable imitation of the scream of a red-shouldered hawk. Not always conspicuous, they slip furtively through the trees when tending their own nest or going to rob the nest of another bird. Of the birds classified as perching birds or songbirds, the common raven is the largest, the size of a hawk. When it comes to intelligence, these birds rate up there with chimpanzees and dolphins. In one logic test, the raven had to get a hanging piece of food by pulling up a bit of the string, anchoring it with its claw, and repeating until the food was within reach. Many ravens got the food on the first try, and some got it within 30 seconds. In the wild, ravens have pushed rocks on people to keep them from climbing to their nests. They've stolen fish by pulling on fishermen's lines out of ice holes. And they play dead beside a beaver carcass to scare other ravens away from a delicious feast. If a raven knows another raven is watching it hide its food, it will pretend to put the food in one place while really hiding it in another. Since the other ravens are smart too, this only works sometimes. Songbirds of New England. What is a songbird? Songbirds are perching birds. They belong to a group known as passerines. Nearly half of the world's birds are in this group. 
These birds have specially adapted feet with three toes facing forward and one toe facing backwards. This allows them to grip onto a perch. Songbirds can be seen in your garden, in parks, woodlands, and on farmlands. If you feed the birds at home, most of the birds that visit your feeder will be songbirds. Songbirds have a highly developed voice box, which allows them to sing beautiful and complex songs. Their songs can be heard most clearly early in the morning, and this is called the dawn chorus. The black capped chickadee. Now I've noticed I've seen a lot of these in my yard in recent days. Tiny, plump bodied, big headed bird is a familiar woodland resident and backyard visitor in the northern US and Canada. Gray overall, with buffy flanks and a contrasting head pattern, black cap, white cheek, and black throat, short stubby bill is used for hammering open seeds. You might have heard their sound from your wind or from your yard. The European Starling. Walk outside, look around, and chances are good that you'll see a starling. Often regarded as a pest, the starling wins our grudge admiration for its adaptability, toughness, and seeming intelligence. Across in North America in 1890, it is spread to occupy most of the continent. That's a pretty big range. And it's now abundant in many areas. Does it sound familiar? House Sparrow. If you walk around outside, look around, and don't see a starling, you'll likely see a house sparrow. Also extremely common, these birds thrive in humid environments where they can be found foraging on sidewalks and fluffed up in bushes. Another introduced species, so that means they were brought to our continent, the house sparrow hangs in groups and wear a hodgepodge of colors, brown backs, gray chest and caps, and a blatant black patch covering their chins and throats. Good bird fact. House sparrows live in organized military-like units that are led by the male with the biggest black patch. So next time you see a group, look for the bird with the most black on its breast and you've likely found the leader. Tips for beginning bird watching. Gear up. Every hobby has its essential gear and birding is no exception. All you need to get started is a pair of binoculars, a field guide, a weatherproof notebook, and an easy to use birding app. I found that the Audubon Society has a really easy app that you can use and it'll help you identify birds that you see based on descriptions. Know where to go. You don't have to stray far from home to go birding. Any green space or open water source will do. Use virtual maps to pinpoint good spots and plan your itinerary right from home. No, um, you can bird watch from your window. It's really easy once you start looking to notice that there are birds everywhere. So how do you find a bird? Some people seem to have a sixth sense for locating birds, but don't be fooled. There are no wizards in birding. All it takes is practice. Finding birds is mostly a matter of being aware and knowing where to look. Next time you go birding, try these four steps to hone your powers of observation. Step one, stop. If you're in a car, park, get out. If you're with a group of people, finish chatting and stand still. Tuck away your phone, field guide, and anything else in your hand, except your binoculars. Spotting birds requires attention, so take a moment to clear your mind, heighten your senses, and soak in your surroundings. Step two, look. The trick is to scan with efficiency and purpose. Don't just gaze around, try to think like a bird. Scrutinize exposed perches, snags, power lines, fence posts, treetops, and investigate any interesting shapes or silhouettes. Step three, listen. Your ears can help as much as your eyes, especially while birding in dense forests. 
Good birders spend up to 90% of their time just listening. The tap tap tapping of a woodpecker is unmistakable and vocalizations like the croaking of a raven are as distinctive as visual field marks. It's hard to sift through the noise at first. The best way to learn is to spend more time in the field and chase down anything you don't recognize. Step four, repeat. After you've thoroughly studied a scene, it's time to move on. In general, you'll see more birds by covering more territory rather than letting the birds come to you. Walk at a meandering pace and keep scanning the sky and listening to bird sounds while wandering along. When you see a bird or when you arrive at a promising vantage point, stop, look, listen, again and again. And this can be just moving around your backyard and it can also mean just looking through a different viewpoint for a different window in your house. Maybe try the first story versus the second story or the front yard instead of the backyard. Keeping a journal. Try keeping a journal to record what you see. The next time you look out of the window, see if you can identify any birds. If you recognize them, great. If not, that's okay. You can describe them using words or a picture and try to identify them later. Birds are a lot of fun to observe and sketch. Bird watching activity. During this time apart, we can still collaborate and have fun. Take this time to notice the different birds you see out of your window. Once you start looking for them, you'll notice them everywhere. You can jot down notes on the birds that you see, draw a picture or take a picture and send them to your academic coordinator. We can then share them with everyone. Discussion. Think about the following questions and discuss them at your next Zoom meeting with your academic coordinator. What is the most interesting bird that you've seen? I know in my yard, I saw an owl and it was really exciting. I've also seen a woodpecker pecking on a satellite dish. Have you ever been in another state or country? What was different about the birds you saw there? Even think about different locations in New England. Are there different birds on the beaches? Bald eagles are making a comeback in our area. Have you seen one? What was it like? Share a fun bird story if you have one. Share your birds. Keep a bird journal and write down what you see. You can also draw a picture of a bird to share. Use a camera to take a picture. You can share your observations in the Global Campus Online Learning Facebook group. You can also save them and we can share all of our bird pictures when we get back together.